Good morning, everyone. I hope all is well. My name is Camille Hall, coming to you from Beyond Barnard. I'm the Social Director of Experiential Education, and I'm here with my great colleagues who will be, um, will be helping to, well, we'll be facilitating this um, webinar. This is the third part of our Navigating um, Internship, Summer Internship Series, and I'll pass it on. Hi, I am Lindsay Granger Weaver. I'm the Associate Director on the Advising and Programs team. Um, welcome, and we look forward to hearing about your experiences and how you're closing them out and giving you some tips on just a few best practices on doing that and then answering all of your questions. Hi, everyone. My name is Zena Jones. I'm the Internship Program Coordinator at Beyond Barnard. And I'm happy and psyched to be meeting with you guys. And like Lindsay and um, Camille, I'm looking forward to hearing you um, share your experiences and um, letting us know what your summer, rest of the summer plans are. All right, Lindsay, I'm going to share the screen so everyone can see it. And then we'll get, feel free to get started. All right, I'm just gonna put it on, oops. Um, apologies. Um, where is, oh, this is on my PowerPoint. I didn't want PowerPoint, but all right. Sorry about that. So, slideshow. Okay. Lindsay, you want to kick it off? Yeah, so welcome again to this uh, third and final part of our internship series. We did some welcomes. We introduced ourselves. We'll have you all, all few of you here, um, introduce yourselves in a minute. Um, just want to share some goals for, for this next little bit. We're going to uh, time we're going to spend together. So sharing some actionable steps for ending your internship. So some things that you could do to make sure that you end it on a positive note, make sure that you're able to keep in touch if you want to and really think about your experience. Um, and then also some questions that we've had some uh, frequently asked questions about ending opportunities um, that we'll share and then really getting some feedback and really getting into what you all um, are, what other things that you're interested in. Um, so if you all want to introduce yourselves first, um, I could call on you, but if you want to just shout it out, that'd be cool too. Um, and if I sent a sign-in sheet through the chat, but if you didn't see it, um, I can send the link again for sure. So I'm seeing that now in the chat too. But yeah, whoever wants to start. Start. Hi, all right. I'm just eating. That's why I turned my camera off. But my name's Caroline. I'm a rising junior at Barnard, and I'm working for a small political consulting firm that focuses mainly on New York Democratic campaigns. Great. Hi, I'm India, and I'm a rising senior at Barnard, and I am currently interning for a writing um, duo and. Um, doing research mainly in French for them. Awesome. Welcome. Hi, I'm Hi. Rachel. I'm a rising junior at Barnard and I'm currently interning at the Council on Foreign Relations in their publishing department. Welcome, Rachel. Hi, I'm Anne. I'm a rising sophomore and this summer I'm interning at the Child Psychiatry Department at Montefiore Medical Center um, for this parenting group that aims to cultivate good parent-child relationships. Great, welcome. All well, those sound very different and very exciting. And so hopefully you guys can learn from each other and hopefully um, you can just share what we're, how we're ending our thing so we can 
move forward to the next slide. So before we end our internship, you can think about if it actually has to end. So if there are ways, um, there could be ways for you to continue on with this experience if your employer wants you to, or if you really want to, if there's extra work um, in this sort of digital virtual uh, environment, it's a lot easier to continue to keep people on and limited hours. And so if you want to stay, you should just ask and let them know that you are interested, that you're willing. Um, think about being as specific as possible when asking. So not necessarily can I just stay and do stuff, but either like continue the project that you're working on or propose some new things that you may have realized over the summer were needs for the organization. Um, you can also be, should also be very realistic about your own time limitations and kind of effort and energy limitations um, coming up with this semester, whether you'll be on campus or whether or not. Um, really thinking about what your time commitment could be and then, and then um, building out your ask around that. So like the worst they can say is no um, or that, you know, they can't take you on maybe as the way that you imagine, but it doesn't hurt to ask and it's really great. Um, it kind of shows that you've been taking stock of what your situation is this summer, that you've enjoyed your time and that it, even if they can't keep you on, they may also, this may show them that you wanna stay um, or that you're really interested in their work and that later on, if more opportunities become available, then you'll be kind of top of mind for them. Um, but if you do have to go, so if they're like, no, we can't keep you, or if you're like, no, I don't want to be kept, <laughs> um, here are a few things that you can, can do. So first and foremost, finish up your work. <laughs> um, please don't get senioritis here and start to kind of slack off or not do, not perform to the level that you have been or that you want to, because it's just, it's not over. Um, and then these are, even if you don't want to continue in this industry or in this field, you never know who knows whom, and internships are great ways to build a skill set, but also build your network. Um, so stay focused on your assignments, using all of the time management, task management skills that you've built up as a student and as an intern. Um, and then also let your supervisor know where you are on certain projects um, as you're coming up to your closing date, just in case they may have to reassign certain parts to other people or so that they're aware if um, something may not be completed or how complete something will be by the end. And so for in terms of your supervisor, um, you'll really want to just remind them when your last day is. Sometimes, especially if they like you, they kind of push it off or they're like, no, they're not leaving at all. Um, or they kind of don't have in mind that this is when your time is up and then your time is really up. Um, ask about any sorts of closing activities, whether they want a one-on-one -on -one or any special meetings with entire staff. Um, also be prepared to discuss your experience. It's all, a lot of times intern supervisors will want feedback. Um, or want to know what they could do better in the future, what you enjoyed and didn't enjoy about your experience, just so that they can improve the process. Um, and then you should also talk about your future plans and goals with your supervisor, because again, this is a really important person, important part of your network moving forward. And so they may be able to connect you with people who can get you further in what you want to do. So as you all who are here um, start to close out, have you thought about either continuing on with your internship or thought about any of these sorts of like nitpicky, maybe obvious, but not really things, ways that you can end things um, on a high note, if anybody wants to share? All right, um, so I'm gonna hand it off right now, correct, to talk about LinkedIn. Okay, so LinkedIn, um, as you know, pro probably, all you guys are probably um, have connected already on LinkedIn, um, but LinkedIn is a very good source to um, make sure that you keep those connections, um, that you make new connections. 
and um, just keep like a good network uh, uh, of, of colleagues and professionals um, that can kind of help you in the long run. So um, if you are at your internship and you're ready to leave, um, you want to you wanna touch base with um, people at your internship, any professionals at your internship that you've connected with, that you've worked with directly, um, and make sure that they, excuse me, I'm sorry. Let me just, um, I'm so sorry, I had to close my window. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot going on out there, apparently. Um, so you want to connect with colleagues on LinkedIn so you can um, easily stay in touch with uh, the people at your internship um, and start with the close contacts. Um, like I said, the people that you work directly with, um, it doesn't have to be your, um, uh, it doesn't have to be your supervisor per se, it could be the assistant or um, someone that, you know, you had to report to on a daily basis. Um, just try to you know, keep those connections on LinkedIn and, um, and take it from there. And you want to avoid any potential awkwardness um, by doing this after you leave. So you want to make sure that you connect with the people that you are, um, that you are in direct connection with um, at your internship. If there are people that you don't really um, talk to on a daily basis, you don't really work with, those are probably the people that you maybe not want to connect with on LinkedIn, and um, that's totally understandable. Um, but you want to make sure that you know you kind of um, do keep those um, those contacts that you want to maintain um, after you leave your internship, and just regularly update your network. Um, if you you know you figure out that you you want to connect with other people from your internship, you know just make sure that. Um, you keep you keep your network updated. Um, you want to make sure that you update your resume and your LinkedIn profile. So um, any uh, experiences from your internship that you've any new experiences that you've learned from your internship, you want to definitely take advantage of your LinkedIn profile by updating it. Um, uh, many of you. I've seen on LinkedIn um, personally, and a lot of uh, internship uh, recipients, um, internship grant recipients have um, benefited from uh, connections on LinkedIn. So um, LinkedIn is a, is a great source. Uh, you wanna reflect on your summer experience and use information to update your resume and your LinkedIn profile. Um, and you wanna put everything on your resume and your LinkedIn profile while it's fresh. So like I said, anything that you've learned, um, anything new and cool and fresh that you've learned at your internship, you wanna make sure that you add it, um, add it like, you know, right then and there, or just uh, while it's still fresh in your mind, just make sure that you, you, you put those factors and those items on your, your resume while it's, um, while it's new. Um, and add deep des descriptions to emphasize the scope of your um, accomplishments. Also, thank you notes are a very good uh, way of keeping connected with um, your connections at uh, your internship. Um, they show um, appreciation for, um, for the organization um, taking you on as an intern and in this, Current environment, it's probably um, it's probably a good practice to um, write a thank you note, thank you letter to um, your organization's supervisor, uh, just because they probably had to make special accommodations for remote um, for remote access, and um, they were willing and able to take you um, to to have you on, on their team and to uh, have you intern at their organization. So um, thank you notes could be a good tool for you to um, maintain good connections. So um, pick whatever format works best for you. Um, we 
at the internship program, we have uh, a specific format for the thank you notes. Um, and it's basically straightforward. Uh, and it's not thanking the actual internship supervisor, it's, it's actually thanking the donor, but um, it's pretty much the, the same, uh, the same in the same vein. So, um, but be free to, to, to pick what works best for you. Um, and be specific so that the receiver knows it's not generic. You wanna um, make sure you get the, the person's name and um, specifically what you did uh, with that person, um, what, uh, what work that you've done, um, how they allowed you to uh, strengthen um, uh, your, your, your work and um, how you work. Uh, you wanna be very specific in your thank you note, so. All right, um, so I know that we've covered quite a lot already. Before I jump into my section, are there any um, questions that may have come up? Okay, well, if not, and you can all hear me, right? Okay, great. All right, so if not, then we'll get into this section. So when it comes to um, internships and, and I guess for specifically for the summer internships, um, we get frequently asked questions and we felt that it was best to um, highlight um, three of the most frequently asked questions that Dion Barna has received. Um, so I'll walk you through those questions that we receive and provide you with some answers. And then if you have additional questions, obviously feel free to, um, to ask, all right? Um, so frequently asked questions that we have is, what is an exit interview? Um, any advice for reaching out to old supervisors? And how do you keep in touch with supervisors after leaving? So the first um, question, what is an exit interview? So, you know, as, as an exit interview is basically a meeting between you as the departing employee and um, either the supervisor or someone from HR, the HR department, um, to have a chance to provide feedback um, where, you could, where you could provide the feedback about um, your experiences, um, what you learned about the experience, um, just generally as an individual or as an intern working there, um, get a sense of um, just the various policies um, that the, well, it's, the it exit interview is like one, it's one of the policies um, on how to conclude an experience at a um, site. So this tends to be very uh, formal or sometimes it's not depending on the company. So before you get to the exit interview, you do want to get specifics uh, from your supervisor as to what that will look like. Um, it is an opportunity for you to be able to provide um, you know, like, I guess, feedback that is honest and transparent, but at the same time, you do have to be careful of your candor because this is gonna go on record. This is gonna be kept on file. Um, it may be referred to um, in, let's say, in the future, should you decide to seek out an opportunity there again, or maybe refer to um, if you're seeking out a reference of some sort, so you, you want to be transparent, but at the same time, just be mindful of your candor. Questions about an exit interview. Have any of you um, have discussed that with your supervisor as this might be a part of your process as you conclude the intern, the internship? Do you all have do you all have a sense of the expectation of when you when you close your interview what that's going to look like? I mean, close the internship. What's that's going to look like? I don't think so. At least for me, I um, like kind of gave my end date and I laid out a couple specific things that I'd like to learn before then, and if that's possible. And then I asked if there's anything else I could do before that. 
and I was kind of hoping either they'd mention this or something else, but they just didn't really say anything besides like, oh, we'll try to get to these like actionable items, but nothing about kind of like assessing the internship or anything. Okay, okay. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I, I guess it really depends on the, the company um, or organization. For some internships, it might not be as formal as an exit interview. It might be where your supervisor uses, let's say the last, um, no, last check-in, um, the last one-on-one -on -one that they have with you as an overview of what you learn um, during your internship experience. Um, and for you to be able to offer feedback or for them to offer uh, feedback as to how you've grown um, throughout the experience. So it may not be as formal as an exit interview, um, but you definitely want to check in and see, you know, if if that opportunity will present itself where you can, um, you know, kind of like tie the bow on your internship experience. Um, so if you haven't done so already, check in or check in again to see if that's possible. Um, moving on to the next question, um, any advice for reaching out to old supervisors for recommendations? Um, this is a really good um, question and it really depends on the length of time that has passed um, in, in regards to reaching out to your, I guess you, in that time, old, old contacts. Um, so when you leave your internship, your contacts will consist of your supervisor or supervisors, um, colleagues, um, you know, peers that you work with. And depending on how long, it, it, could, it can make it easier or a little bit more challenging, um, you know, to reach out or the comfortability of you reaching out for recommendations. So for example, if it's been less than two years, um, then, it, you know, it's a pretty good chance that your supervisor still you know remembers you and has enough um relevant and pertinent information um and details about you as um you know about what you contributed and they may be able to serve as a really good recommender due to the fact that um you know the experience that you have with them was pretty recent um if it's beyond two years um it might take some more time it, it might be a little harder for them to remember uh, what you did contribute and that's in that situation you may have to help um, jog their memory um, by let's say sharing reaching out and sharing your um, your resume or um, you know letting them know like when you were an intern specifically when exactly did you work as an intern at their site um, so you might so if it's longer than two years you might have to really provide more detail um, as to when and how did you contribute for the organization or company. Um, either way, it is really good practice um, to inform um, your past supervisor, um, colleagues of, um, you know, current goals um, that, you know, that you're where you are right now, your current goals and um, provide them with a link to, let's say, your LinkedIn page profile um, so they can, you know, see your growth as a person and what you've been up to. And then also you want to make sure that, you know, if, if you're reaching out to an old contact and it has been a significant amount of time, you do have to be comfortable for a no if they feel um, or if they know that they will not be able to, if their recommendation would not be helpful or they will not be able to provide you with a recommendation that will truly highlight um, you know, your skills for the opportunity that you're pursuing. So those are some things that to keep in mind. Um, I, a, dish, a question I just want to throw out there, how many of you are um, possibly going to seek out your, your, I guess, your supervisor now as a possible um, recommender um, for an opportunity that you might be seeking in the fall or for the spring? Anyone? I don't have anything specific that I need them to be a recommender for coming up, but I do plan to ask them to be a recommender for me in the future. Okay. Okay. So then, yeah, go ahead. Thing, um, it's also really good. Uh, one really easy way to keep someone informed and keep them in the loop is to add them to your LinkedIn. 
Um, and so just making sure that they're there and that that's updated. So that way they can see also anytime you change a position, they'll get um, updated on it. When you post things that are related, they can see how you're really still engaging with the field or kind of what you're up to. And so that's one strategy to make it a little less awkward to reach out and kind of give them your whole whole span of whatever you've been up to is to just slowly trickle things onto your LinkedIn, making sure that folks are always updated that way. Yeah, Lindsay, that's a really good point. And for to make sure that that um, notice comes up, I believe you have to go into your privacy settings and make sure that when you do update your um, LinkedIn, your contacts do receive that notification. Um, so please be sure to um, you know update your privacy set settings. So like Lindsay said, um, your contacts can receive those notifications uh, when you post them. Um, any questions about recommendation letters? All right. So relevant um, question, um, how do you keep in touch with supervisors after leaving? Um, obviously this is a great idea if you plan to stay in the same field. Um, I think even if you're not staying in the same field, I think it's just great to keep some type of um, relationship or just, just some type of contact. Um, with previous employers. Um, so like we said before, you know, LinkedIn is one of the easiest way to keep in contact um, with past supervisors and colleagues, um, even if it is on an impersonal level. Um, also, it's, you know, from my experience, I've, um, well, well, when I was in college with internships, I would periodically send um, email, just like updates, just to, kind of keep in contact more directly on a more personal level. Um, so if that's something that you feel um, comfortable with, um, updating your former advisor, I mean, supervisor directly, that's another great way. Um, but obviously that takes a little bit more effort um, to make sure that you are periodically updating a former supervisor. So it depends on your comfortability and what works for you, um, but keeping in touch with supervisors um, it's definitely going to be beneficial for future opportunities that you might be seeking and you would like someone to speak on your behalf as to what you contributed, um, similar skills that match the opportunity that you are applying for, or transferable skills um, from a previous opportunity um, that can be applied to a new opportunity, maybe even a new um, field um, that would be helpful in regards to you securing a new position. So any questions, concerns about what we just discussed in regards to um, recommendation letters, keep in touch with supervisors? Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh um, I have a question. Yeah, Hi. Sure. Um, Thank you so much for all this helpful information. I really appreciate it. I was wondering if um, three, the three month rule, which I remember like hearing a while back at a BRN Barnard session is kind of applicable for that or like you meet, I think that they said once like message people within three months or every three months, or do you think longer is fine? I just was wondering like what your thoughts are on that, like the frequency rate of kind of get, keeping in touch with people. I think it depends on where you are um, in like a job search or career exploration and also um, would be the purpose of reaching out and so just making sure that it feels organic like if it feels like it's like all right the alarm went off time to reach out to people but there's not really much substantive to say then it may not be as beneficial as if you reach out when there's something meaningful um, and by maintaining like on LinkedIn I think posting every month or so may keep people seeing your name and seeing what's going on there. Um, if it's more of like a personal connection or um, someone who you're actively trying to cultivate a relationship with, then just making sure that every time you reach out and they respond, you ask for something that you can engage with so that you can then talk to them about that the next time. So it's really like building in ways to make it feel like it's an organic reach out, but three months, 
it's like a good thing to keep in mind, but not something you have to hold hard and fast to if it's, if it just gets to be too much. I mean, it gets to feel like you're just kind of doing it to do it and not doing it to build a sort of like genuine connection and relationship with this person that can move on move, um, professionally moving forward. That, does that help at all? <laughs> yes, sorry, my um, unmute wasn't working. Yeah, That's thank fine. you so much for your help. That's really good advice. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Of course. Any other questions? All right, if not, we want to provide you with some reflection questions um, as all of you get to the final stages of your internship, um, things to think about. So we provided four here. Um, what did you learn? Um, what do you still want to learn? What surprised you the most? And what were your three major accomplishments? Um, we don't, I mean, as a small group, we don't have to run through all four of these now, um, but I'll throw out a question um, to all of you here. The second question, um, what do you still want to learn? Um, those of you who are on this call, you are all working at some very, um, I guess, uh, impressive um, <laughs> sites. And I'm curious as to like, what are some things that you still want to learn before you conclude your internship? If anybody's comfortable sharing. Um, I think that throughout the internship, um, since I'm working in pu the publishing side of the organization, I've learned a lot about publishing, but since I'm not there in person, it's been harder to sort of meet people who have other positions at the organization and learn about the things that they do and other career paths sort of in the um, like policy research sector. So I would just like to learn more about that since I'm not necessarily sure which route I would want to go down in the future. Got it, got it. And have you, I'm just, just a follow up, have you <laughs> mentioned um, this to a supervisor and have, and if so, have they provided any avenues for you to um, gain that information? Um, so I did mention that during our like mid, mid internship check-in um, and they said that they would put me in contact with um, someone who works in the, like a specific task force that I thought was interesting, but then I haven't heard anything about that since then, so I could probably follow up. Yeah, yeah, definitely follow up. Um, as we've mentioned mm -hmm. before in this virtual time, um, patience and also just sometimes just a reminder um, can be very helpful for the person at the end um, since it's a lot to manage um, virtually. So yeah, that's definitely, you know, see if that opportunity is still, is still there for you and reach out. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyone else in regards to things that you still want to learn at your internship site? If not, I'll ask um, the, f the fourth question that we have here. Uh, what were your three major accomplishments? You don't have to give, all, give three, but is it something that you're really proud about um, thus far that you've contributed or you've accomplished at, the, at your internship site that you would like to share? Well, if not, <laughs> something that we discussed before um, is definitely making sure that you're writing down the things that you are um, accomplishing, accomplishing at your internship site, like as in a journal. You may not think that is an accomplishment. Um, you may not think that is a significant contribution, but it is. Um, so you want to make sure that you are jotting down 
everything that you have, you know, your tasks, what you've been completing. Um, so when you conclude your internship and you look back, um, you can see like how your contributions were impactful this summer. Um, so you don't, you know, you don't have to share it now, but definitely, you know, I want you all to take the time to reflect and, you know, give yourself credit for the work that you are doing and do understand that you are doing great work um, in a very unique situation, um, which is a pandemic. Um, and, you know, the fact that you are interning this summer during a pandemic and finding ways to contribute virtually in a very, I guess, unique um, schedule. Um, some of you are, you know, had to adjust to different time zones. Um, our meeting with supervisors, you know, literally just strictly do Zoom. Um, learning how to adapt and socialize with peers over um, a computer screen. Um, you know, do understand that, you know, you're, 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 you're doing amazing, amazing work. And I just want you all to, you know, give yourself credit Give yourself more credit for what you may be doing doing now. So, any you can also know that an accomplishment doesn't necessarily have to be something on your resume. Like a good accomplishment can even be like realizing that this was not something you want to do forever. Um, it can be like a personal accomplishment too. Um, realizing that you are able to do things that you may not have been able to do or like learning more about yourself. So all of those like major accomplishments yeah, it's always great to have some something to add to the resume and to LinkedIn. And when people ask you what you did this summer, like future employers, for example, ask things, you can say, have something for them to say, but also know intrinsically that every, um, every situation you, you learn and gain something. And that is sometimes the prize is knowing what you don't want. <laughs> yeah. Any last questions, concerns before we conclude this webinar, this series? All right, if not, we really thank you for your time. Um, again, um, you'll see that this is our contact information here. Um, feel free if you have additional questions, um, if you would like a one-on-one -on -one with us virtually, you can set up an appointment with us on Handshake. Or like I said, reach out to us via our email that's um, posted. And um, for those of you who participated in other webinars um, in the colloquium series, we thank you. Thank you for participating in this one. And we really look forward to engaging with you and continue to support you um, come fall semester. Thank you, guys. You're very welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. You're very You're welcome. welcome. Uh, great rest of your summer. Once you get something inside your head, no one.